Welcome to Introduction to SNES Game Modding. My goal with this series is to expand interest in understanding and recoding games for the best system ever made, the SNES. This is Episode 1, Inexhaustible Lives and Battletoads in Battle Maniacs. You'll find links to the software I use in this video in the description below. I'm going to try and assume we have as little knowledge as possible, however if I gloss over some details, just post in the comments and I'll try and reply. This game has the reputation of being one of the hardest games on the SNES platform. In fact, my brother and I just recently beat this game on a multiplayer for the first time after 20 years, thanks to the modification we're about to look at. Our inability to beat this game is what initiated my search into the game's code to determine how lives were handled and to see if infinite lives was possible. It turns out that simply increasing the life count is much easier, and that's what we're about to look at. To start, we need to understand just a little bit about the SNES's memory and how it stores data internally. There's memory locations for the controller interfaces, for the, the audio-video data that you see when you play the game, the game's actual cartridge data, and then there's general purpose RAM. And so what is this general RAM used for? Well, things like uh, your current point score, for example, in a game like Street Fighter, your XY coordinates of your position or your jump height in games like Mario, event flags for completion of events, like uh, in an RPG, Final Fantasy, for instance, and of course, your life count for games like Battletoads. Really, any game value that could possibly change has to be stored in RAM because the game's cartridge is ROM, which is not modifiable. The problem, though, is that we don't really know where in RAM the life count is. The game programmers are completely free to choose any location they want. So how do we go about finding this memory location? We could manually sift through the game's RAM, trying to find the value we're looking for. We could potentially go to Google and find a gaming forum where someone else has already found this memory location. There are a few other options too, but I chose a method that's suited to my uh, programming talents. The idea for finding where the life count is stored in RAM is really quite simple. Using CSNS, I created three save states, one with three lives, one with two, and then one game with a single life left. So when each save state, the life count's value is changed, but it's still in the same position in RAM. Here you see some RAM data from the save state with three lives. To find the correct RAM location, I wrote a simple program to analyze each save state and find locations with values 3, 2, and 1, respectively, in the same position in RAM. So here is the save state with three lives. You see the threes. Then here again is the next save state with two lives. You see the twos highlighted. And finally the last one with just one life left. Thankfully, only one RAM location had a value of 3, 2, and then 1 in it for each of the three consecutive save states. Now, I encourage you to go back and rewatch the last three RAM screens to see for yourself that the location 0C3B meets this criterion. But now the problem we have is that the ZSNES save state does not map up directly with the, with the SNES memory at all. That is to say, memory location... 0C3B is not 0C3B inside the SNES. If I knew how ZSNES stored the data in each save state, I could easily find the SNES memory location I'm looking for, but I don't. So to find this data in the SNES, I went to the debug version of SNES 9X made by Geiger. So we need some point of reference, so I started looking at the RAM data that looks similar to that data near 0C3B in the save state, and was comparing that to the SNES memory. A good place to start is the beginning of RAM, so we start there, and I just happen to see a bunch of 1C values that look similar to that in the save state. Now, using these 1C values as a reference, we can easily see that 0C3B corresponds to the actual SNES memory location of 7E0028. Now that we know where the life count is stored in memory, we can go to the debug version of SNES 9X and find out how this memory location gets its value. First, we need to set a breakpoint so the program knows to stop executing whenever it sees data written to this 70028 address. So we check right, so when data is written to that address, we stop, we click run, and we see that a zero is being placed in there, it's just being initialized, cleared, <clears throat> no big deal. Now we see STA, which means register's data is getting sent to this 28 address. So we find the instruction location, 8103, we choose a location that's a little before that and say stop running when you reach this instruction. We run it again and we see that a 3 is placed into the accumulator which is then placed into 
memory location 28, which makes sense because we have three lives. So we have now found how the initial life count of three is populated. Now I open the Battletoads ROM data in the hex editor, and we see that the position 8100 maps to 100 in this case, and 89 is the load A, 85 is the store A command. So we see 8903 is putting 3 into the accumulator, 8528 storing data to location 7828, and we also see location 2A, which happens to be player 2. We won't get into that. So to change the initial life count, we simply overwrite the 3, 0. In this case, I chose 6F, FF. And now all we have to do is load the ROM and play with basically infinite lines.